Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my friends. How are you? Comment ça va? Thank you for coming today, and welcome back to Senior Elementary Art Class. Our lesson today is called Watery Light and Shadow. For today's lesson, you will need a graphite pencil, an eraser, watercolor paper, paints, and brushes, a cup of water, a palette, and paper towels or an old rag. Our lesson today is about changing values in a painting. There are three different methods to changing tone with watercolor paint. The first is by adding water to lighten the value of a color. You can create small puddles in your palette, each having a different ratio. More water and less pigment equals lighter colors. Water equal to pigment will make a mid-tone. And less water and more pigment creates darker colors. The second is by lifting the color from the surface of the paper. While the paint is still wet, take a dried brush to remove some of the paint from the surface of the paper. A dry brush acts like a sponge and will suck up the water and pigment right into its bristles. Rinse and dry the brush afterwards to ensure that you don't accidentally use the paint you lifted from the painting. The third method is by layering paint on top of paint. When the paint is dry or semi-dry, you can add more color to darken the colors already on the paper. This piece is called Barrels Out of Bond from Tolkien's The Hobbit. It's a painting by John Howe made with watercolor on paper. All three methods would have been used by Howe to produce this beautiful illustration. Preparing the base colors and values on the palette before painting all of the initial abstract washes. Lifting color from the tree trunks, branches, and rocks to then add a lighter green for the moss. Layering paint to produce deeper shadows and even darkening Bilbo to help him stand out against the light background. This piece is called A Song for Our Bone. Another painting by John Howe made with watercolor on paper. Which method would you use to paint the sky and overlapping hills in the background? I would use the first method to prepare the values on the palette to paint them with washes. What about the hills and forests in the middle ground? You could use the second method of lifting the paint with a dry brush to lighten values on the top planes. What about the arch in the foreground? Here I would use the third method to layer the paint to darken values in the shadows. Our project today is called Castle on the Hill. Let's start by sketching out our composition. Now I started by putting in the castle using very simple shapes. Here it's a gate, and I decided to add a path that was coming towards us. So I start thin and make it get thicker as it gets towards us. Now I'm adding a bit, little bit of ground for that gate to be on. I'm adding some texture lines as well to make it look. Now these are vertical to make it look like it's a cliffside. A few extra details. Now I'm going to start thinking about the rest of my castle. Now here I'm using still simple shapes but I'm also thinking about using basic knowledge of perspective, putting some sidewalls 
that gets smaller as I get further away. I'm adding a turret uh, attached to this back building here as well. So this turret is a basic cylinder. Curved lines at the top and straight lines down the sides. few windows. I'm making them extra small to make the castle look very big. Now adding that side plane to give it a bit more three-dimensionality. Remember these lines need to go towards a point. You don't have to worry about the horizon line so much in this piece, but at least make it look like you're going towards a point on the same line. Again, another smaller turret, and my castle, as you can see, goes right off the top of the page. That's fine. It actually adds to the idea that this is an absolutely massive building. I'm lining up some windows on the side. Now, this is the perspective plane, the side plane of the castle. It's important to have these in this composition because um, we are going to be doing some lighter and darker planes with our watercolor paints. I've added a few mountains in the background, and there we go, there's our sketch. Now let's get started by preparing our paints. I'm choosing all of my pigments and putting them in the middle of my palette. This is to prepare my palette for that first method, preparing the different values of, um, of uh, colors for my composition. Now it's hard to see here, but I've chosen a brown, a blue, I put a blue with white to get a bit of a lighter sky blue, a purple and a green. And I've mixed the sky blue, and now I'm preparing the puddles. Now, for a lot of water and lighter colors, I'm actually going in with the brush and rubbing both sides four times. For the mid-tone value, I'm rubbing the brush on the edge of the cups twice and for the darker value I'm only rubbing the brush on the edge of the cup once. While the colors themselves don't seem to be any different on the palette you'll see on the paper there'll be there's going to be a very big difference. I've prepared three values of two different colors my two first colors and I'm going to start by painting my washes. If you remember from previous lessons we have to wet the paper where we're going to paint first. So I'm starting with the sky. I often dry my brush with the rag just to make sure I don't have any excess water that I don't want for my painting. Now here I'm going through the different uh, tones. This is the mid-tone I'm using. I'm creating a gradient here. Now I'm going to be using the second method of picking up the paint, of lifting the paint, to get my gradient just the way I want it. I'm actually dabbing it to get the brush to pick up the extra paint. Now I'm going with my darkest value for the sky. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to dab away the extra paint to really create a nice gradient in my sky. Now I'll do the other side of the sky, that little tiny bit we can see behind the castle and do the same thing. I almost always keep my paper towel or rag in my left hand. It's just very handy to be able to dry my, my brush regularly. So now I'm going to do the path and the ground that the gate is sitting on. Same thing, I'm wetting it first. And then I'm going to do my initial washes. Again, drawing my brush in between, just to make sure I know exactly how much paint is on my brush. I'm adding the darker value, the mid-tone value down the middle, just to make it kind of look that the path curves up on the edges because there's so many people that path, pass on it. And thinking of the same idea, I use the dark value to create kind of track marks of the different wagons that might have come through. 
Now, you don't want to keep going and wetting, um, uh, wetting the paper somewhere that hasn't dried yet. So you notice how I went to the path. The path edges weren't touching the edge of the sky. Now that the sky is dry, I'm wetting the mountain range. This way I can make sure that the colors don't blend together when I don't want them to. In these mountain ranges, I chose a purple to do them. Again, I'm using the same technique. I'm drying off my brush and lifting the paint that I don't need. So I've layered the paint, which is our third technique as well. You're going to see more of that later. Right now, I'm just picking up what I want to keep in the wash. And sometimes I even add a bit of water to make it flow more. I'm going in to wet the other mountains. And I am trying to work from back to front as much as possible. I wanted these mountains to be a bit darker, so I chose more of a mid-tone, even a dark tone value with my purple. And now I'm going into a lighter tone with these. And at this time, to create the lighter tone, instead of preparing it in my palette, I decided to just make sure there's extra water. All right. Here I'm using the darkest value of my brown. Because the side of the, um, of the cliff is um, further away from the light, I want it to be darker. And here I'm just fixing... Um, there's something I didn't like about the path, so I decided to just go back and fix it. I'm using the same three techniques. So I'm lifting a bit here. I'm actually lifting with dabbing to create a bit of a texture on the path to make it look a little rougher. Now I'm going to head back to my cliff side. <laughs> wetting it first before I add the wash. Now I actually ran out of my darkest tone here, so I prepared the same way, two, uh, two dabs of water from my brush and adding the pigment to make sure it's nice and dark. Now I only have the castle to uh, put the wash on. Now here I'm actually blending uh, a bit more of the brown with the green. So I wanted a bit of a brownish green for the castle. Same method as before, I wet the area of the paper that I'm going to be painting on first. Remember to always keep, um, uh, always make sure that everything else is dry first before you wet the paper once again to create a new wash. Now you'll see I'm going to make a mistake here. There's a part of the castle I actually wanted to keep white on the turret. That detailed piece at the top of the cylinder. Now to fix this problem, once I realize that I've done it, I actually take a smaller brush to see if I can lift the paint. So that's our second method, lifting the paint off of it to lighten it up. It does work to a certain degree. I'm not able to get rid of all the color, but that's okay. Now that I've done all the washes, I can go in and start our third method of layering our paint. I'm preparing a blue here, it's the phthalo blue, to create my shadows. Now I'm going to be layering this so these colors are actually going to blend together. Remember to make sure that your paint is either dry or semi-dry before you start this step. Now, even though I'm using the same uh, blue, the exact same paint, you can see how different the blue is once I layer it on top of the purple. Again, I'm using our second method here of lifting to be able to create a good gradient. Now here, I've added a bit too much blue, so I add some water to see if I can lighten it first. And then I'm going to our second method of lifting once again to bring it back.
and I'm constantly rinsing my brush and drying it off to pick up what I need. So now I'm using the same color, but I've added a bit of water to the mix to make it lighter so that the shadow doesn't seem as dark as the other areas. I'm adding it to the side planes of the castle to make it look a little more three-dimensional. It has a shadow side. So just like our previous exercise, I'm making some planes darker because they're turned away from the light. And I'm layering a very dark blue to create my windows. They're all in shadow since it's daytime. Windows always look dark when it's daytime. And I'm doing the same for my gate. Now at this point, it's just the smaller details. I can try lifting a bit of color to lighten certain things, adding a few small shadows. This is the only time where you really see me painting only with a smaller brush. I used mostly the big brush throughout this process adding a few shadows underneath certain areas that I know light can't get to. So just keep going at this point until you're feeling happy with the results. Thank you, my friends, for joining Senior Elementary Art Class. Merci beaucoup. I'm sure you made some amazing art. Prends soin de vous. Take care, and I will see you next week. Au revoir.